friends. Uh, so this is going to be an extremely theory heavy video, so buckle up and my apologies in advance. Um, as some of you know, a couple years ago when I was traveling through Africa, my, uh, my wonderful host, Will Ruddick, wrote me a computer program that was designed both to be a POI simulator, and uh, I've, I've shared this on my blog. If you want to go to drexfactor.com, you can probably find the old blog entry that it's linked to. Um, but uh, also, it was designed to measure the distance that a poi head travels as it's going through any of the roulette or trochoid patterns that we usually play with. So, all of the anti spin and in spin flowers, as well as extensions, isolation, static spin, what have you, you know? Um, the reason being that I had a hypothesis at the time that when it comes to putting together hybrids, there are specific harmonic relationships that we're looking for in terms of uh, the distance that a poi head travels in relation to another. Uh, simply because I felt like, you know, for example, a static versus triketra anti-brid felt so much more satisfying than a isolation versus triketra, for example. I think one reads a little bit easier than the other, and I wanted to have an answer as to why that was. Um, I'm still pouring through the numbers on this, but a number of trends emerged, and one specifically this past week that I wanted to throw out there. Um, first and foremost, a lot of us have played around with the parametric equations that create roulettes and trochoids, and those of us that have know that those equations describe, for example, a triketra as a two downbeat move. That is, there are two points at which the poi head, it comes between me, my, my hand rather, and the floor, right? However, that does not necessarily mean that the poi head is traveling twice as far as it would be in a single downbeat move, like a cat eye, or if we want to keep the hand path the same size, a, uh, a linear isolation, right? Uh, in fact, when it comes to comparing a triketra versus a cat eye, it's very, very close to a two to one ratio, but the, the poi head in a triketra, even if you're doing it at a unit circle size, turns out to be just slightly less than twice the distance of, uh, of a cat eye. So unfortunately, the numbers very rarely work out evenly, but that doesn't mean that cool patterns don't emerge from them. For example, if I were to take the distance traveled by a poi head in a cat eye and divide it by the distance traveled by a poi head in an isolation, it turns out that that proportion is identical to the proportion of how far a poi head travels in a triketra versus how far a poi head travels in a static spin. Despite the fact that it's a different sized hand path, despite the fact that there are different numbers of downbeats for these moves, they have the exact same harmonic relationship, which I believe is one of the reasons why it works so very easily to switch between a isolation versus cat eye and a static versus triketra, right? Okay, so then question number two arises, how often do you find precise uh, relationships between patterns? And the answer is you don't. Unless you're talking about comparing two moves that are both perfect circles, you never ever find relationships that break down to perfectly even numbers. However, there are a couple that are really, really close. Um, they also are not hybrids that we normally play with. Um, for example, if I'm doing a cat eye, it turns out that if you compare it to the other moves in the table, the closest move in terms of the distance traveled by the poi head is static spin, which is kind of problematic because the hand path of the cat eye is not the same size as the size of the poi path in static spin. Normally when we create anti-brids or hybrids, we're looking to create a relationship between a hand and a poi head or a hand and a hand, right? This would be a relationship between uh, essentially a hand and the middle of the tether, right? But as you can see, there is something oddly satisfying about this move, and I think it has something to do with the fact that the two poi heads are traveling roughly the same distance. Once again, it's not perfect, it's a little over, but 
it is pretty close. Now the question is, why don't we usually play with moves like this? After all, in the double staff world for the past couple years, they've gotten a lot of mileage out of having the tip of the staff, rather than tracing one of the other staff tips, uh, tracing the point where the hand is holding on to the other staff, right? Uh, there's a whole range of different tricks that, uh, that are given rise out of that kind of relationship. Why can't we do the same thing with poi? Um, in addition to the cat eye versus static kind of hybrid, and I'm kind of thinking of these in my mind as fractional hybrids right now because they're based upon fractional relationships of a circle, even though they have whole relationships in terms of distance. Um, one that's closer to breaking down to a whole number is, say, if you take the triquetra that you would have if you were doing isolation versus triquetra, that is, performing the triquetra as a unicircle move, and combine that with a static spin. it turns out that the relationship here is nearly 2 to 1. And the funny thing is, is it's actually closer to being 2 to 1 than the cat eye versus static is to being 1 to 1. Um, the reason, of course, being that the triquetra is traveling just slightly less than twice as far as, uh, as the cat eye. So, the, the cat eye is a little bit over, and the triquetra is a little bit less over, is what that boils down to. So, uh, I'm throwing this out there because I want to challenge people to find more stuff that makes use of that relationship. Uh, there's no reason we can't take advantage of it. So, um, I would say, if you come up with some cool stuff, post it as a response to this video, because I would love to see it. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, have yourselves a great week. Peace.